and my name is Robert Garland. I am the choreographer for New Bach. Um, I had a very successful but very expensive debacle <laughs> with a ballet called Crossing Over that required uh, white flooring, white legs, white backdrop, a white ramp, and all white costumes, believe it or not. And I think there were 16 dancers in it, maybe 20 dancers in it. It was something like that. And so Mr. Mitchell came to me and said, um, young man, for the next ballet, you just get lights and tights. You just get lights and tights. I was used to exploring our more theatrical side of Dance in Harlem. And so that's how Return came to be because I needed to do a small cast with just lights and just costumes. And it turned out to be my first real success, actually. Um, and then moving on to New Bach from there, it was the same idea. Um, very sane. I became comfortable with the simplicity. I'm Pamela Allen Cummings, and I'm the costume designer for New Bach. I met Robert when he was a dancer at Dance Theater of Harlem many moons ago. And um, I don't think I was... I don't think I toured with Robert then. I think I was in the costume shop at that time. But uh, he had asked me to design his very first ballet before I even see any choreography or he even decided on what he's actually going to do. He sends me the music and I in turn listen to the music uh, with headphones and I turn the volume up. And I do that because I need to hear the tone and the richness of the ballet that he's, or the music of the ballet. And that helps me to get a real feeling of how it's going to be. So I'm actually looking at the torso of each dancer and as a collective of each dancer. And I look at the torso only because that is the heart, the lungs, and the gut of a, mu a movement. Each dancer actually helped me to highlight or to really accentuate their body type. And then I can stand back and take a look at it, you know, because uh, there would be some dancers who actually, if they had their choice, they would wear a bathrobe. Or some dancers would like it so tight that they can pass out from it, you know, what I do to enhance the body. Actually, that is something I learned between Mr. Mitchell and Jeffrey Holder. They really taught me how to accentuate the body and what to actually take in and where to take it in at to highlight, uh, I, I guess you would say black bodies, but I think that would be for anybody or any dance body. Pamela, you know, you are from so many decades of being the first to dye shoes dye tights. Like I remember going into the wardrobe room and seeing vats of water with different, <laughs> different stuff and just like literally watch you guys just do, at the times, sometimes we had 50 to 60 members in the company doing that all on your own. Whereas when I was doing it, we started with, with uh, I think it was pink or white. And then when they finally had flesh tone, which is a tan, at the beginning of three colors, white, pink, and tan. You uh, applied or you, from that was the base. And from that you went on to lighter, middle range, and to darker. It was always a test because it, was, it depends on the mixture of the dye or the spray paint that you're using. And it was always, a, it was a hit and miss or you had to fine tune it. It's, I, I was really happy when manufacturers, Capizios, and others at least had the basic of tights and shoes. It's a lot easier now, you know, that you can begin with. And I think that's such a lovely improvement for us to have. But no, it was a, it was a hit and miss. And it's for a person of color. And that was something Mr. Mitchell always wanted. I mean, we can be in that, that room for hours, Robert, trying to perfect that. The coloring and lots, you know, it's it's a lot easier now. We're such a ray and hue of textures and undertones, you know, the yellows, the reds, the blues underneath. It's a very difficult thing to do. And once you apply it, you know, um, 
but it's beautiful once you hit it, you know, and the eat the harder, more difficult parts were for uh, darker skin. The lighter complexions were easier. It's the darker skins where you have to go under there and find if it's blues, if it's mm -hmm. reds, if it's yellow. You know, just because you're a brown person don't mean that you should go red. Your undertones may be yellow. Whole thing, and when you hit it, it's beautiful. But a lot of times, if you get the dye, which is a powder form, it's not, the ratio in there might be uneven. So I can make a mixture and say, okay, I'm taking two, two spoons of tan, one hint of gray, two of blue. That should be the formula. It should work every time, but it doesn't. You still have to tweak it for it. Um, so it's a, it's a difficult concept, but if you get it, it is beautiful. Well, and I have to say, the construction is so good that all of them were wearing the same costumes from then. They're 20 years old, and they are like new practice. I'm Roma Flowers. I am the lighting designer for New Bach. Um, I first met Robert with the creation of the seminal work Return um, in 1999. I think Robert had gotten a reference from another lighting designer he knew who said, call Roma up, and he did, and we've been together ever since then. My process begins really where Pamela starts her collaboration with Robert. Um, Robert Garland has to be one of the most musical choreographers I have ever worked with. So first things first, he has to send me a copy of the music. Uh, even before we've talked spatially, even before Pamela has started to get in the conversation, with Robert, I always begin with his music. That will tell me so much about the mood of the piece, uh, and that's where I begin with. Um, from that point on, um, ideas are starting to come out. I'm having conversations with Robert about just what my reaction to that musical element is and how I'm seeing that translate visually. What I think I will need to use is my visual tools to really enhance that. I love Pamela. She's my favorite costume designer. She always sends me swatches yeah. that I just then begin to take and, and light it, actually put it in front of gelled lights to really start thinking about my ideas of mood and color and how, how again, I'm, I'm picking up things to make my palette there. You know, in ballet, we have, we're, we're, we're very much a spotlight kind of, kind of genre. And, uh, and, and slowly but surely with Gloria, another thing, Gloria uh, Brahms, she weaned me off of that huge light hitting dancers. And, uh, and, and also um, making dancers look appealing that were darker skinned as well. I, I remember once sitting in rehearsal and him saying, I just love ballet. He is a classicist, he really is. Yeah, it's neoclassical, but then he always does this little twist to it. So I, I kind of follow along with that as well in the lighting design. Um, of course, I'm using DTH's repertory plot, which is fundamentally based off of the Gene Rosenthal, Tom Skelton, um, conventional light plot. And, and we all understand that as the side lights, the overhead lights, the front lights, the back lights, worked into systems that way. With Robert's little uh, twerk there, I always try to extend that color a little bit more. And I also want to move away from that older convention of put a spotlight on, you know. Somehow I want to keep it contemporary, even though it is this neoclassical foundation. And, I, and, and that's sort of my my hesitancy to, for using a follow spot is trying to move away from that tradition of follow spot for the soloist and lights up for the ensemble and instead really shaping where light is and where light is not in other means rather than just that follow spot convention. I also want to say human skin is kissed by light. There's, there's something about light and human skin 
that there's just a glow. There's always a glow. 